Hello friends, today we'll be installing a new stereo in my 6th generation Mitsubishi Mirage. The stereo I chose to go with is designed specifically for the Mirage, so it already comes with the correct bezel and it comes with a wiring harness that is plug and play for this vehicle. Unfortunately this didn't come with any installation instructions, so I will make the rules. We're going to start off by putting in the screws that attach our bezel to our stereo. Here's the location of the five screws I just put in. Here's what the unit looks like from the front. They sent me six screws, but I could only find five holes, so I'm not sure if this is a spare or if I'm just dumb. We're going to start out by using a flathead screwdriver to pry out the bezel around the vents and the hazard button. I recommend you do your prying on one of the sides and not on the top half of the bezel as the clips are all on the front of this bezel. This orange piece of plastic that's called the trim removal tool was included in the kit. Once you've removed this bezel, remember to disconnect the cable going to the hazard lights. Now that we've removed this, we are going to remove the two vents from the bezel by undoing these clips shown in the red circles using a flathead screwdriver. Now we're going to remove the hazard button by pushing it out from the back side. If we take a closer look at the radio, we can see that there are these two Phillips head screws we must remove before we can take the radio out. We should now be able to pull the radio right out of the dashboard, as shown here. Remember the dangling wire shown in the video is from the hazard light switch that we removed earlier. Now you can see these four electrical connectors we must remove. The leftmost one, the gray one, is the USB port that's in the glove box. The two middle white ones are for the radio, and the rightmost one, the black one, is the antenna. I originally spent like 10 minutes trying to unscrew the antenna, but apparently it just pulls right out. For those of you that are interested, here's a quick look at what this new hole in my wallet, I'm sorry, I mean dashboard, looks like. Now let us begin plugging things in. The kit came with this adapter for the USB connector. You will see me plug in now, it's this weird black thing. We will also be plugging in this adapter cable right here. Now we're going to stick our GPS unit somewhere. I'm choosing to install the GPS unit here in the middle above the vents. This is actually where the OEM GPS unit would be if I had bought the higher trim level with the navigation package. The reason we need a GPS unit is because wireless CarPlay requires the stereo to have a GPS unit installed. It's so that it uses less of your phone's battery and it's because a lot of people will have their phone in like a backpack so it'll have poor GPS reception when they're using wireless CarPlay.
The other end of this GPS antenna just twists onto the back of our radio. I'm just going to clean up the excess cable here with a Velcro strap. They give you a lot of cable because some people will opt to put the GPS antenna on their dashboard under the windshield in case they're somewhere with poor GPS reception or if the dashboard is made out of something metallic for some reason. Now we can install our hazard light switch. It just pushes right into the front of our stereo bezel. All that's left to do is to plug things in. We'll start off with the adapter cable they provided us for the radio. And we will plug in our USB port adapter for the glove box USB port. And we will plug in the antenna for our FM AM radio. In case we ever want to use that again. For the astute observers watching this video, you may have noticed that the second white connector that was originally plugged into the OEM radio isn't being used here. It's just being left dangling behind our new radio. Uh, it's not used in this installation. I'm not sure what the wires are for. Maybe someone can leave a comment down below saying what those wires are for. But I've tested this out and it wasn't needed, I guess. I plugged in the hazard light cable last because the cable is shortest. Now we're going to leave the radio right here before putting it in. We're going to turn on the car and test to see if it even works. Now that we've confirmed that the radio works by playing some copyright music, YouTube, please don't demonetize me. I'm just joking, this YouTube channel is not monetized, I don't have enough subscribers, so 1,000 subscriber minimum to be monetized. We are going to try and put this radio in now. Uh, th this new radio is not held in place with any fancy screws or bolts or any of that advanced technology. It's literally just held in place by the plastic clips that hold on the bezel. For any of you interested, this radio also came with a free backup camera that I was too lazy to install and a free computer mouse, which I have no idea what I'm going to do with, but free stuff's always good. Now that I've got it installed, you can see that the whole friggin' radio shakes. I grab it by the top here and wiggle a little bit. It's almost like the genius Mitsubishi engineers put some screws to hold the radio in place for a reason. Hopefully this doesn't rattle. Something I noticed that's kind of cool about this radio is that when you turn on the parking lights, the buttons on the left side of the radio light up red. The only feature I'm really planning on using is the wireless CarPlay functionality. I've tested it out on a short drive and it seemed to work reasonably well. Uh, my biggest gripes at the, at the moment are that it takes a little bit of time to boot up. When you turn the car on, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds for CarPlay to automatically launch. Which doesn't sound like a long time, but it feels like quite a while when you're in the car when wanting to go somewhere and the engine's already running. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is that this screen brightness, even on the lowest brightness, is too bright for my liking. What you see in the video is the lowest brightness and it's very bright. Uh, otherwise, uh, small things, you know, you never really think about kind of bother me. Like, um, sometimes I find myself reaching for a volume knob, but this car doesn't have one. And sometimes I find myself wanting to change songs, but I'm no longer able to do that. I used to just flip between radio stations, my old radio. But now if I'm looking at like the map, like Waze, and I want to change songs, I have to switch to Spotify or I have to switch to the radio app. And I have to change songs that way and then switch back to the map. It requires me to take my eyes off the road. I can't do it without looking as it's a touch screen. And now for the most satisfying part, indicating the job is complete. Thank you for watching. Please leave any questions, comments, concerns down below. A, a link to this product will be in, in the video description. This radio costs around 350 Canadian dollars shipped to my door, including 
the import taxes and duties. I think it's a fairly good deal. If I have any issues in the future, I'll leave a update in the description.